ago, Stacia Rico, then at the ripe old age of 12, entered a singing competition as a lark, and a recording executive from a Christian record label offered her a development deal. Eventually, the Arico family moved to Nashville, and Stacy released her first album, Stacy Arico. It spawned her two top ten singles, There's Gotta Be More to Life and Stuck, both good songs. And while well, Stacy is back with a brand new album, and she's just off a world tour, and she brought a video camera while she was traveling, and we have unprecedented snippets of her exciting adventure, and she's actually here live from Seattle right now to answer your questions. Hi, Stacy. Hi, how are you? Excellent. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us. So tell us, what was this world tour like? Um, the world tour has been amazing. You know, there's it's one thing to be able to release your music in America and, and have your you know fellow Americans supporting what you're doing. But when you get to go to the other side of the world and be surrounded by people who don't even speak the same language as you, have you know b big cultural gaps and all of that, but still to see how music is able to bring people together and still having you know these people supporting my music is just amazing. Not to mention um, just the unbelievable education that I get from getting to see so many different places, and and it's it's so good for you. You know, it, it's um, it really stretches you. It gets you out of your comfort zone, um, and I just you know I really enjoy it. I enjoy the international travel. Hey, Stacey, a question for you. Your story of getting started is such a great one, and here you are eight years later. Are you still pinching yourself? I mean, have you, do you take a chance to sort of smell the roses and realize what's happened to you in eight years? Um, you know, it's funny because people say, you know, do you miss having normal life or is it weird having such an abnormal life? And I've been doing this for so long now. I mean, I, I only lived 12 years of my life outside of the music industry and then the last almost nine years have been in the music industry so I've al almost spent as much time in as I did out so I don't know if my gauge for what is normal <laughs> is um, is very good you know but um, but at the same time um, I think that I, I do realize that I am um, so fortunate in um, just how much I've been able to be exposed to in my lifetime and the experiences that I've had I think I've I've been blessed to pack more into 20 years than I think a lot of people get to in a lifetime. And in that sense, um, yes, I do kind of pinch myself every day. Okay, good answer. You've got a lot of fans out there, so we want they want to ask you questions, so let's get right to it. Uh, okay. Hi, I'm Shalane, the from the Bronx, and I'd like to ask Stacy, how was your time spent in Australia? Hi, I'm Elizabeth, and I'm from New York, and I wanted to ask Stacy, um, have you seen any kangaroos or koalas in Australia? Everybody Ooh. loves Australia. <laughs> Everybody's obsessed with Australia. Tell us some stories from there. You know what? It's actually really funny because, um, you know, of course there's all the stereotypes about Australia and the koalas and things. And actually, I think you have to kind of go out in the brush to see <laughs> okay. the kangaroos. And with the koalas, you have to kind of go to the zoos and stuff. But um, I was surprised to see how much wildlife there was just kind of out in, in, you know, during the typical day when we were out wandering around. I have a couple funny stories. One was that we got in the car one day and there was a grasshopper. I'm not kidding, it was like this big. And it was clinging onto the car. And we drove around from interview to interview for like four hours and that grasshopper did not let go. It was like on the front of the dash for the whole day and just wouldn't let go and was like clinging for dear life. And that was just bizarre, like the weirdest inset insect situation I've ever seen. And then there was, um, we're sitting outside eating one day and all of a sudden this big Komodo dragon comes up and it's just sitting by our table and our waitress is feeding it strawberries and it just sat there. And then um, by the Sydney Opera House, there's a big park and um, it's gorgeous. It's, it's just a park where people go running and stuff, but it kind of looks very tropical. And there's these huge, beautiful trees. So we're walking around taking pictures of the trees and all of a sudden my guitar player, David is like, Look, look up at those trees, look closely. And I look up and the trees were completely filled with thousands and thousands of fruit bats just in the middle of the Oof. day, hanging off the tree upside down. And their bodies are like this big and they're like hairy and they have kind of this orange hair all over them. It was disgusting, okay, it was so, so gross. So now that we're we all did totally get a lot of wildlife. Now that we're all yeah, totally creeped of, out, Speaking right? of scary, like Friday the 13th <laughs> Yeah, exactly, stuff, exactly. Was, You're really sticking creepy. with our theme, we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, let's get to the tour now. Another one of your fans has a question about your tour. Hi Stacy. this is Adi from Santa Clara University. My question is, what is the hardest part about being on tour far away from home? Fair mm. enough. 
Yeah, you know, it is, I'm not going to lie, it's really hard, you know, especially for um, somebody like me who, you know, in my free time, I don't really, like the last thing I'm going to do is go out and spend my Friday night off out at the clubs in New York, you know, hanging out with all my celebrity friends or whatever. Like I really, um, I enjoy being home. I'm kind of a homebody. And so when I'm on the road a ton, um, I really miss being home with my family. Today is um, a really good day for me because I woke up in my own home. Okay, this this gives you a picture of what my schedule's like. I bought a, a, my first place about a year ago and I've spent five nights actually sleeping there. So I actually got to sleep there last night. I woke up this morning and um, I get to go see my little brother play his, uh, play a football game tonight, which is the first one of the season that I'm getting to see. So all that stuff is just so valuable to me and I, and I really do miss that um, when I'm on the road. So, you know, it's, it's um, you, you get, you have to kind of take the, the good with the bad, I think. <laughs> well, Stacy, welcome home, and I hope you are enjoying your new house. <laughs> you get to stay I there for a little while. Good. So. Uh, you mentioned earlier that people like to say, what was it like to go from being unknown to a superstar? And you said that you, you know, really kind of always were a superstar because you started at such a young age, but we have some viewers, some fans who want to ask a little bit more about that. Hi, I'm Roger Queen. If I ask Stacy one question, I would ask her, um, how did she go through the transition from becoming a known person into a superstar?
New York, Stacy, thanks for being with us. Be seen and be heard. Send us your questions and comments and we'll make you part of the show. Just log on to abcnews.com to find out how.